Autonomy. You heard that word a lot today. Autonomy is not a luxury. It's a basic human need. In a 2018 blog, our esteemed guest expert, Dr. Catlin Tucker, who already has told me she will not forgive me if I misquote her even slightly, <laughs> makes this point unmistakably, and she goes on to define autonomy as freedom from external control. The context of that blog was about the ills of so-called classroom management. She admits that she doesn't like feeling managed. Me neither. I bet you don't either. I don't think anyone likes feeling managed or manipulated. She implores educators to seek to motivate, not manage their students. Our students are human beings, and human beings are born to be free. <clears throat> At this time, freedom, liberty, is very much on our minds. Whether it's because of the fragile state of American democracy or because of the unthinkable tragedy of those held captive by Hamas in Gaza. The precious concept of freedom has reclaimed the poignancy that I think we allowed it to lose in our decades of relative complacency. We're going to learn this week's Parsha about God commanding B'nai Israel to observe every 50th year in Israel as a jubilee year, a yovel. And this concept of Yovel is dripping with defining meaning about what exactly dror, liberty, or release is, and what exactly it means to be truly free. It's interesting that this concept of the freedom of Yovel applies not only to debtors, to servants, but also to the land itself. It's a funny concept. What does it even mean for land to be free? The Pasuk says, the 50th year shall be a yovel for you. You shall not sow, neither shall you reap the, neither shall you reap the aftergrowth or harvest the untrimmed vines. So no sowing, no reaping, no harvesting. In other words, leave the land alone. Let the land be free from your external control. And I can't help thinking that of all the seemingly endless responsibilities of educators, and for that matter of parents, among the hardest, probably the most important, is to know when it's time to leave the children alone. To create an environment that leaves room for genuine student autonomy. And yes, guiding them gently toward tapping into that which is already present inside themselves. Look, I believe conferences like this can be, I believe this time has been for many of us, and I hope all of us, a time of introspection and nurturing our own motivation. Um, and I think it's a key ingredient. As educators, as funders, as professional development providers, and as parents, to succeed in fanning the inner flames of the various people, audiences that we're working with. And incidentally, and I was advised not to say this, but got to say it anyway. <laughs> That's true both for those whose flames, inner flames burn so brightly that we can't help but see them, and also for those students, children, whose inner holy flames seem sometimes maybe a little harder to detect. So that's why I'm just so glad to be here with you and why I'm so glad that you're here. And it's my absolute pleasure to get to be the one. It's great to go first because everyone still has attention span. Uh, but really, it is my pleasure to be able to welcome you uh, on behalf of the trustees of the Mayberg Foundation, Manette and Lewis Mayberg, and on behalf of the entire Mayberg Foundation staff team and our philanthropic partners and dear friends, Arnie and Walt Winchell, 
Where are you? And thank you. And Scott Berman from United, on all of our behalfs, I just want to say welcome. And thank you for being here. We're so glad that you've taken time out of your incredibly demanding schedules to learn, to share, to teach, to renew and refresh the brilliant flame of holy motivation that burns so brightly inside of each of you. Welcome and thank you. Sharon.